I'm Bill Ward. It's time to play Constitution Challenge. The United States has a federal system of government where each level of government, federal, state, and local, has its own powers. Federalism is today's topic on Constitution Challenge. Now, let's meet our contestants. Returning from round three, we have Jenny Kaplan from Berkshire High School and Billy Thornton from Mountaintop High. Joining us is Carol Worcester from Jeeves Senior High. Here is our first question. True or false, the Founding Fathers created a federal system because they didn't like the idea of putting all the power in one set of hands, like having a king. Dave, what are they saying on the streets? True. False. False. Okay. Now, we're going to, do, we're going to edit this backwards. When they met, they, were, uh, they didn't want to put all of the power in the hands of one person like a, like a king. Is that true or false? That is true. Oh, too late. See, I got the false. But he ah. answered, I say true. Uh, you'll see. Go ahead. I always let him answer first, but it's true. Okay. True. That's true? It's true. We don't, no kings in this country? No, no kings. That's good. That's a good thing. Except Elvis. Okay. <laughs> except, <laughs> except three, except two? Except Elvis. All right. He's alive. He's, he's, a, he's alive, you know. Where, where is Elvis? You uh, saw him down here just, yeah, the, just yeah. last night. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Okay, contestants, what do you think? They didn't trust putting all the power in one set of hands. Okay, why? Because when they were colonies, they were ruled by the king, who had all the power. So they came up with the federal system, which divided the power. So specifically, what does federalism do? Federalism puts all the power in the state's hands. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, that's a confederation. The federal system gives the central government some amount of authority over its citizens, giving a degree of sovereignty. Since the power is divided, each level of government has its own job to do. But what if the federal government doesn't like how the state or local government does its job? Can the federal government change that? Dave? I think they can. <laughs> I don't think they can. <laughs> Um, they're, no, they're not supposed to. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Yes? <laughs> well, they can challenge, they can take it, they'd have to take it to court to challenge because uh, federal law preempts state law. Yeah, they just take everything you got and just walk <laughs> off with it. Take it monumental places and build a parking lot. Right here, get up here. That's, they that's can right. do all that. They, they can, can do all that. Well, I mean, there's a question whether they should, I suppose. Yes. What can, what can they do? They can change the Constitution to, to uh, force the states to uh, abide by what the federal government requires. Thanks, Dave. Well, contestants? No. In the federal system, local power can't be changed by the federal government. Okay, but the federal government could pass a law that supersedes local power. Here's our next question. It has to do with state government. What do we call the leader of a state? Wow. Um, I don't know. Governor? The governor? A single state, a leader of that state is the governor. A Go governor. Governor. You from oh, Australia? I'm from England. Uh, I can never tell. Okay, panel, what do we call the leader of a state? The governor. That's right. Each state government has a chief executive called the governor. Good. What about a constitution? No, there's only one of those. <laughs> no, each state has its own constitution. And each has three branches of government. That's right. Are state government branches different from federal branches? Well, yeah. No, they're just like the federal branches, legislative, executive, and judicial. Let me ask you this. Can the states make laws that contradict the Constitution? No. Any law passed by a state legislature needs to be constitutional. Yes, it works both ways. The state laws can't conflict with federal laws, and federal laws can't conflict with state laws. What about local governments? What do they do? They do stuff like take care of streets and run the schools and the police and fire departments. In my city, they run the gas and electric, too. So because of federalism, you get your passport from Washington, your driver's license from your state DMV, and your dog license from your city hall. Here's our next question. How are the state governments involved in electing the President of the United States? A, they're not involved at all because the people do the voting. B, the governors take turns being President. Or C, the states get a certain number of electoral votes that are used to select the President. Dave, what are they saying on the streets? 
The I'll last make the one, state yeah. government state is. The electoral college is the one that's involved in electing. Yeah. The electoral yeah. Oh, sure, we know right. that. Uh, yeah, of course that you do. I we know that. See. See. Yeah, see. Say, say like you mean it. See. See. I told you you know an answer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if our contestants can come up with the right answers. The states are involved in electing the president because the Constitution set up the Electoral College. <laughs> Close. The Electoral College. And why did they set up the Electoral College? Because they couldn't count all the votes at the same time. They compromised. Some of the delegates wanted the state legislatures to elect the president, and some of them wanted the people to vote. So they kind of combined the two and called it the Electoral College. And how does the Electoral College work? Well, it doesn't work as well as it should because a popular vote doesn't mean as much. And uh, the Electoral College is uh, based on each state gets so much. And so the people that aren't in the majority in that state don't get any say. They don't get any say. The electors all vote for the whatever the majority said. They select people to be in the Electoral College and then they are the ones that vote for the president. Well, if he wins the whole state, he gets all of the electoral votes from each state. He has to win the, the, the populist vote of the state. Right, you that's know, true. Each state has so many electoral votes based on, I, I don't know, if it's, is it based on population? It's based on the number of seats they have in the House of Representatives. Okay. okay. That's right. And if there's a tie in electoral votes, the House of Representatives has the right to choose the new president. Another one of the arguments that the framers had during the summer of 1787 was how should the executive be elected and one of the concerns was that the general population would never be wise enough to elect uh, a president and so there were those who said really the state legislatures should elect the president and then the compromise was that instead of state legislators electing the president and instead of the general public electing the president instead electors from each state would be selected and then they would vote on who the president would be. How states chose their electors would be up to the states. In some cases they would be chosen by popular election, in some cases they would be chosen by the legislatures. In any case, the whole, the, the electoral college was set up to elect the president in a very interesting way. It's still around, even though many people find, find flaws with it. Um, the concerns, those who say we should get rid of it entirely, um, those who disagree with the idea of getting rid of it entirely do so because of concerns that, that if we got rid of the Electoral College, then the president would only campaign on national issues, that local issues would never create, would never get any of the limelight, that, that federal issues, that national issues would, would get, capture all of the attention. With the Electoral College and the need to get every state to show, you know, to pay attention to issues, you know, it's, the Electoral College is very difficult to understand. It's that each state, in terms of how many electors they have, it's based on how many representatives they have and how many senators they have. So if a state has seven representatives and two senators, they have nine electors who can cast their ballots and if each vote counted separately, the outcome could be very, very different. What happens in most cases is that all of the votes go to the same candidate. And so what you end up with is very often, I mean, you have an instance in which the popular vote and the electoral vote may not necessarily be the same. Federal, state, and local government, each with rights and responsibilities under the Constitution. So who won today's round of Constitution Challenge? We all did. Whether you were on the streets, in the studio, or right or wrong, you're all winners because you learned a little more about our Constitution. Tell them what they got, Bob. A ton of information about the Constitution that no one can ever take away from you. You've been playing Constitution Challenge. I'm Bill Ward.